Chapter 3, Jesus and the Will of God The ruling principle in the life of Jesus, both in its prayer and in its service, was the will of God. He conditioned his prayers upon the Father's will, Luke 22, 42, and he declared that he never did anything but the will of his Father, John 5, 30. He found the truest relationships in life, not in the mere ties of flesh and blood, but in common devotion to God's will, Mark 3, 35. In doing that will was his meat and drink, so that he could even forgo other nourishment while some noble ministry sustained him, John 4, 34. He taught his disciples to love it. They were to pray not so much for a million details as simply that the will of God might be done on earth as in heaven, Matthew 6.10. Those were to enter into his kingdom who did the will of his Father, Matthew 7.21. He pointed out that this will was a will of most eager love, Matthew 18.14, and not hard and exclusive, 1 Timothy 2.4. At the same time, he taught that there would be no maudlin confusion of moral distinctions, and that God could not deal with those who rebelled against his will as he would with those who loved it. Luke 12:47. How good the will of God is, as Jesus taught it, appears in his hopeful assurance of the will of God to care for his own. In the divine will lay a guarantee of absolute safety for those who are truly Christ's own. John 6:39. Hidden in the hollow of his blessed hand, not a foe can follow, not a traitor stand. But who may be Christ's own? Is that a place open to anyone? This is the will of my Father, Jesus said, that every one that beholdeth the Son and believeth on him should have eternal life. John 6:40. The will of God opens its rest and safety to every man who has eyes for Christ. But is not the ability to see Christ with the beholding eye, the eye that sees through him to the Father's heart, a power denied to some? Jesus answers this doubt. He declares that the matter turns on the individual will. Whoever wills to do God's will, he shall be able to understand Jesus' teaching to, quote, behold him as the open way to the Father and the peace and strength of his noble will. John 7:17. 7, this was the preaching and practice of Jesus about the will of God. It delivered him from all fear. Nothing can intimidate God's will or the man who is set in it. Fear not, said Jesus. Luke 12, verses 7 and 32. It brought him perfect steadiness of life and composure of heart. There is no fitfulness or vacillation in God's will. Jesus, doing it, never changed his plans or modified his doctrine, or altered his project. He was and did, at the end, what he had been and done from the beginning, John 8, 25. And nothing could move the calm of his reposeful rest in the will of God. In the very torments of his trial, he was the majestic and steadfast figure, and Roman governors seemed fretful and tawdry beside him, John 18, 33 to 38. In chapter 19, verses 9 to 12, the will of God lifted Jesus above, quote, our fervish ways. It gave him the power of God. God does his will through the man who does God's will. See Matthew 9, verses 6 and 8, Luke 4, verse 32, John 10, 18, 17, 2, and Matthew 28, 18. As Jesus did the will of God, we are to do it. And it is to be with us, not only submission to power above our own, but also partnership in power greater than our own. Doing the will of God is not synonymous merely with resignation. It is the note of life of aggressive and resistless achievement. See Romans 12.2, Ephesians 6.6, 6, Colossians 4.12, 1 Peter 2.15, and Hebrews 13.21. It will be with us a deliverance from sin. The will of God is against all sin and uncleanness. 1 Thessalonians 4.3 and Hebrews 10.10 It will glorify life into personal partnership with the living God. Right becomes his living will, not an impersonal thing. Colossians 1.9, Philemon 2.13 It will open to us the secret of accomplishing prayer, 
1 John 5.14, and make us sharers in the abiding eternity of God, 1 John 2.17.